वी आर थोक सेंट्रल थोक सिटी नाइन्टी वन पॉइंट वन एफ एम इन दुम पीपल वंस अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ इट वी आर हे and uh, we have uh, two very special pers- two very special individuals and we talking about free diving right now now i remember the name of your wife so i'll ask you to introduce yourself about good morning how you do sir good uh my name is ren chapman um my wife ashley and i uh are happy to be here in trinidad doing some free diving and you're here with rondel benjamin thank you so much for your presence as well rondel good morning good morning Off the bat, what is free diving? Well, free diving is uh, basically um, breath hold diving. So you're taking a breath on the surface, and you're only utilizing that that breath um, on a on a dive, whether you're going deep or you're going for time. Um, it's a uh, it's a fun, freeing way to immerse yourself in the ocean. Is it easier to actually start off free diving, or is it easier to move to transition from having uh, breathing equipment, snorkeling, or uh, the oxi- oxygen oxygen tanks well, and stuff? In yeah, with with scuba, I, you know, I think um, I think we all start off with a mask and snorkel and maybe a set of fins in the ocean. That's where we start, and then the next progression is to go to scuba because it's presented to us more readily um with free diving is just uh basically you go back you revert back to what we were doing when we were young and just had our mask and snorkel and our fins on um with the you know with the free diving that we teach it's a little more um it's a little more uh what's the word in intense not so much in, well yeah i guess it's in more intense i mean we we teach you techniques on how to dive deeper and stay longer and of course try to be as safe as we possibly can while doing that how did you find out about this rondel um i was looking at that ted talk um by a very famous guy called guillerme a french dude who was speaking about his his experience of gazing into the infinity of connecting to the world and the planet in a unique way and i said dude i wish i could do that because that looks like yoga and steroids because my thing is to access mental states and then use it for something something functional is my whole thing right and then i was lucky um, one of my friends who's connected to rob allen trinidad and tobago um nathan and mushta got me involved in the course with ren and ashley and it literally has changed my life and what what are some of the most fundamental ways one i lost 45 pounds um that's always a benefit and that's just a added benefit of free diving two being someone who grew up uh, middle class trinidadian scared of the water to know somebody who could swim out in macari to the top of the bay and watch the turtles and the rays and know that macari is so alive and then go to la filet and realize Oh, there's something other than just the show, you know, and that you feel so deeply connected to to Trinidad again, and then you find out now about all these beaches that you didn't even know existed, because you know you you know you circulate in such a small area of interest because you just don't know, and once you're around other spear fishers and free divers and you know guys like Mushtaq, and they hook you up and. It just you know I now feel like a full fledged trini. Mr. Chapman, where some of the who was you just spoke about spear fishing and a small circle and people who are involved in this kind of endeavor, Rondell. Who are some of the people who come to you when you have your courses? Well, most of most of our clientele are spear spearos. They want to spear more fish, or um, they want to spear better fish. Um, So but there's another group that just want to be in the ocean. I think um I think Benji is one of those guys who um who sees it for and, and you know everyone the spiros um the guys who just want to free dive it's more than it's it's about being in the ocean and like 
being in the wild. It's the true wilderness. And you're gonna when you walk into that ocean, your you and your buddy that you're diving with are are in the wilderness. Um, it's the underwater w- wilderness, but it is the wild. I mean, just like anyone would would leave and go up into the jungle to to hike to a beautiful waterfall. It's the same exact thing. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty 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 um uh you know it's a it's a different different people different groups well hold, and, and i want to ask the question how did you get into it because <laughs> it's and because i'm sure you you would have a slightly different experience to benji you know i i got into it through spearfishing um uh, we're, we're fr- originally from north carolina and there's really good spearfishing there and uh you know, I, I, I started off free diving um, and not knowing what I was doing. And, you know, my breath hold was, you know, 45 seconds. And my deepest dive was like 40 feet. And I, you know, at, if I dove to 40 feet, I thought I was going to die when I got back to the surface. Um, so a friend of mine said, hey, why don't we go try to take, why don't we go take a course? So we went down to Miami from North Carolina. We went down to Miami. There was a course offered there, the same exact course that Ashley and I now teach. Um, I took, uh, and in four days of that class, I I went from having a 45-second breath hold to having a 4 minutes and 30-second breath hold. Um, and that's pretty average what people will do. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. No, DK is over here laughing at me, but it's true. Um, and then uh, we actually got blown out of the ocean, so we ended up going to the Cayman Islands. And um, I brought Ashley with me, my wife Ashley, who is the, the U.S. national champion as well as a three-time world record holder for free diving. I took her to the Cayman Islands, and she uh, ended up diving deeper than anyone in the class. And, you know, there were some big names like um, Julie Rife, who, um, you know, there's probably a lot of Spiros listening that have a Rife spear gun. Well, Mr. J. Rife's daughter was in the class, so it was pretty intimidating. But, um, yeah, Ashley actually... Uh, dove to 122 feet after four days, and I was right behind her at 121 feet. So, um, yeah, it's uh, that's how we got started, and then kind of the competitive stuff went went and uh, went a few years later. And it w- and I want to talk about the competitive stuff in a little bit, but from 45 seconds, you have four days in the middle, <laughs> yeah, and then four minutes. That's how it worked. I want to ask both of you. How much of it is mental? Because you already raised the point, Rondell, that it's almost as you, you, you consider it yoga on steroids. How much of it is mental? I would say we always tell people about eighty five percent, but that, you know, it's 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 a high percentage of men, mental capacity, like mental strength. Uh, you know, we're going to teach you technique. And, th- and it, that's pretty important, Stream, streamlining, um, getting yourself as, as small as possible to go through the water as easily as possible. Um, it's pretty important, um, as well as equalizing. That normally is the thing that stops people from diving deeper. But the ability to hold your breath uh, for long periods of time, it's, it's all mental. It really, truly is. I mean... That's part of the attraction to free diving is you're you're challenging yourself mentally, and every single time you push it just a little bit further, and you you gain a little more mental strength. Um, you know, Benji and I were talking about it earlier. You know, this is this we're we're going against some primal fears. One of them's the fear of drowning. You know, we've all had that that dream of drowning it's it's uh it's scary uh so overcoming that um with with this sport is um it's good for the good for the soul good for the mind your take on that benji um well there's there's three things that 
uh, I discovered working at um, Ren and Ashley. One was there's something called the mammalian dive reflex, which I did not know existed. Apparently, mammals and humans are mammals. Once we immerse in water for a certain period of time, our whole biology reverts back to our earlier type of biology. And we are able to do amazing things in terms of our heart rate drops, you know, our lungs change, the way our system works, and we, we become capable of doing amazing things in the water. The second thing that happened was I never realized how noisy my mind was until I started doing the breath hold work. Because only if you can quiet your mind and connect to your deeper self and relax can you find the ability to go through the process of breath holding. So it, it's like, you know, all that stuff they teach mindful meditation and yoga and pranayama, it's all kind of heaped up into this functional application of quieting the mind. And they teach all the techniques. And basically the third thing is, if you connect to the water through your mammalian dive reflex, if you listen to the techniques they teach and you just kind of chill out, you'll be astounded what the body could do. And uh, I think that was like the big thing for me that, whoa, I didn't know we were built to function in water. I didn't know that I had like a whole party going on in my head. And once I got the brass section to relax and got the drummers to tone it down a little bit and there was all this space. Because when you finish a free dive, your brain is clear, you know, at least for two seconds until you go back to the show. But I was like, whoa, I could actually hear my thoughts. This is really cool. Can I tell you, there's a school that I went to and they had a 50-meter pool. And it used to be, you, you speak about this kind of mindful, um, mindfulness and meditation. And I used to love to be the first person making ripples in the pool because there, there aren't people with outfits and just there posing and you're just doing your lines. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm reminiscing now. You, you speak about mindful practice and functional applications how do you see this in 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 that context also for me i've I've done a lot of body work and body practices uh, things like yoga and meditation my issue with them always was right in this really cool meditative state now i go back outside somebody bad drive me i vex i cuss them up um there was no space to take the meditative state and test it in free diving and spear fishing you enter the state and then you go down and then the conditions change and you have to adjust and adapt. So these meditative states are forced to become flexible and pliable. So you're getting to apply it to real stress and problem solving. Because spearfishing is one of the things you can't lose your chill. If you lose your chill, yeah, yeah, you're in trouble. And um, so that's for me what I find to be really unique about the experience. I guess there's other things that I like it. Um, but I've done a lot of things to try and, and connect to myself. But this particular combination of meditation, relaxation, and then having to work in this living, breathing environment has really, you know. So now when I come out of the, the water and somebody bad drive me, it's like a wave or a current or a fish or, you know, yeah, you got to flow around it and keep your chill. So that's what it's kind of done for me. Ren, do you find yourself facing, well, constantly surprising yourself in the water, or is there a plateau where, okay, you're not, you're not, you can't hold your breath any longer, or you there's some junction that you can kind of push past? This is a sport that you can always grow in. Um, it's like Benji said, you're 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 always you're always dodging. Um, the negativity um, so yeah there's always there's always room for growth um, for me personally um, I for me personally as a free diver I um, I require the practice um, it's um, it's it's what drives my health um, I eat well, but I tr I try to eat well. But the 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 pra the free diving practice itself is 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 very healthy for me. I can tell when I'm free diving. You know, we'll go home in North Carolina for a few months, and we're not doing a lot of free diving. 
and I gain a little weight and I feel slobbish. Um, I feel like a slob, but when I'm free diving and, and living that healthy lifestyle, um, man, I, it's just, I can tell I'm going to live a long time if I, if I practice this often. Um, so. You formed, you formed a club here, Benji. Uh, what is the aim and what, what, is the, what is the idea behind it? Well, I mean, first, we had to give a big shout out to Mushtaq Mohammed from Rob Allen Trinidad. He is the catalyst for what's happening. He brought Ren and Ashley to Trinidad, and he's always given us, the Trinidad Study Group from Evolve, all the support we need. And um, what's happened is uh, the alumni of Evolve Trinidad have gotten together because we want to keep swimming. We want to keep building this practice. We want to stay together. We want to bring new people into the sport. We want to really create a safe space. We want to be about conservation. We want to be about education. We want to be about, you know, making the sea a space where we live and we engage and we grow. And um, lucky for us, you know, we have like some of the best teachers in the world and we have some of the best conditions in the world. Between Trinidad and Tobago, we have such a broad range of experiences possible in the sea. Everywhere from, you know, what's happening on the East Coast, the depth and the Atlantic, the Caribbean side, the down the islands, down south, you know, where you have the UVL um, depo depositions from the Orinoco River. Then we have Tobago with, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard very, very famous divers across the globe, sparrows, talk about how amazing and wide and depth the experiences that are possible in Tobago are. And um, my biggest personal objective has always been for a certain segment of our population who's never been able to access the sea in this way, to have the safety, the knowledge, and the, the community that gets them into the water. I, I want to see youth who growing up in concrete jungles you know, because I have family in Maloney, Tunapuna, you know, I am a, a Muruga boy, but I want, you know, those you to, I teach other martial arts to, to feel what I feel when I'm in the sea. And the, the group is so broad and wide. We have uh, George Bovell is helping us, Josh Lewis, one of the best spearfishers. We have anybody you can think of. We have lawyers, doctors, teachers, normal everyday people, you know, construction workers. It's all inclusive. Everybody's welcome. And I believe in excellence. I believe in us attempting to be as perfect as we can by being around the best we can be. And this is like the perfect storm. We have Ren and Ashley, some of the best at what they do. Rob Allen Trinidad, some of the best equipment in the world. I don't know how all of these things come in together. And then we have a cool group who's been four years in development because Ren and Ashley have been in Trinidad for four years. So we have a, a large group of people who know how to dive safely now. And it's now to create that space where we bring people in, get them ready, so that when the courses are here, they could take the, the full advantage of the courses. Because a lot of Trinidadians aren't even comfortable treading. So we do a lot of water comfort, fitness, again, breathing, learning to use your lungs, learning to meditate, so that when the course comes, you're ready to take the knowledge from the course. And then after the course, well, you know, we have our time. <laughs> what is the what is the most basic level you will take someone at in terms of doing this course run? And I ask that question because you say most of the time people who will approach you are like sparrows, people already in the water. So if there's somebody who's saying, Okay, well I wanna use this to help push past limits on land by doing free diving in water, what's the lowest position you'll accept someone? Well, I mean if you can if you can if you can swim, I mean, that's pretty much all you really need um, is the ability to swim. Um, and even if you can't, I mean, you know, a couple of those guys this, this past trip, I was, I was worried. I was like looking over at Benji going, you brought them out here, Benji. Can they swim? Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, you need a mask and you need a snorkel, and it's probably a good idea to, to have a, um, a wetsuit. Uh, so you stay warm because you know if you're in, we're in the water for a long period of time. Our our last training session was two and a half hours. We're in the water, uh, and if you are still 
and and meditating before you do your dive, you're going to be cold. Uh, so that's kind of like the basics of you need. You need to be able to swim. You you know you need a snorkel and a mask and some fins and a wetsuit. You can get all that stuff from Mustak at Rob Allen Trinidad and um, yeah. What are some of the other safety considerations that you'd have in mind? Well, um, for free diving, it's you always need to do it with someone else. Uh, so you need to have two people at least free diving. It's a it's a it's a joint activity, um, and that's just in case uh, something goes wrong, whether it be. Um, uh, something physical that happens to you like uh, you know we're holding our breath so we are as soon as we hold our breath we um, become hypoxic a varying degree of hypoxia which is uh, lacking of oxygen um, and with that comes the potential of possibly blacking out so it's pretty pretty uncommon but it does happen and it can happen so we always bring our buddy with us um, and um, that's like the biggest safety concern. If you've got someone else with you, uh, then you're not just going to disappear out into no to no man land either. I mean, what? It, let's say you get taken away by a current, and your buddy didn't see which way you went. That's not that's not smart. So you know, we um, we it's a tag team. Uh, you know, it's a you always bring your partner with you. I, I'm fortunate I get to bring my <laughs> partner with me. It's uh, my my wife is my partner, so we're good to go. So I asked base level in terms of abilities, possibly, and he said once you can swim, you you are a candidate. Is age is age a barrier? Either too young or too old? You know, the older the older you are, kind of the more mental uh, fortitude, the the more strength you have mentally. Uh, so old is good. Um, if like I said, if you if you can swim out in my creek. And you can swim 100 yards out and swim back. You're probably physically okay to do that. Um, if you can even walk down the hill and walk back up the hill at Mock Creek, you can. You're, <laughs> you're, you're probably <laughs> physically um, capable of, of free diving. Um, as far as young, I, we have a th- my little three-year-old daughter Ani. She comes out free diving with us. Um, she's she's in love with it. I think she's more in love with it because mommy and daddy do it, but. Um, she uh she's into it she's out there with us and you know uh, benji and i were talking about getting our kids involved in things we don't want to push them at it we don't want to push them on push it on them but when they start asking questions like how you do it obviously you're gonna gonna start to smile you're gonna bring them in (laughs) yeah exactly and i know someone was saying that behaviors many times they they caught as opposed to taught so they see what you're doing and they learn from that and many times you don't necessarily realize that you're learning so many things without it'll be very interesting to see some of your daughter's responses to certain things. Uh, I don't. She's not driving to and to give some to curse somebody when if they give her bad drivers yet. But in <laughs> terms of seeing how she reacts to certain things in because life. she has and certain life experiences because she has this practice from this age is something I think would be fantastic to kind of to look at. You spoke about access in terms of you have family friends who are not necessarily from the most affluent areas. But I also hear you talking about fins, goggles, and free diving equipment. How do you have a middle road here in Trinidad and Tobago, Benji? Um, one of the things we, we have to recognize is that there is a lot of access to basic snorkeling equipment fairly cheap. Um, free diving, like anything, requires an investment. And um, once you have a basic snorkeling set, you have enough to start. And then over time, um, you can acquire the equipment. Now, one of the things I'll say about Rob Allen Trinidad is we have some of the best equipment in the world at like reasonable prices. You're not getting the 100% shaft, the 200% markup, you know, and um, the equipment is an equipment that kind of needs to be changed out super regularly. And um, one of the things I just wanted to add that free diving kind of offers us uh, is an opportunity um, and you'll hear about it up the islands is that swimming with like dolphins and swimming with whales 
Trinidad, we have a bunch of dolphins floating around, and they're very inquisitive, and they want to swim with people. And apparently, free diving offers marine conservationists and marine biologists opportunities that scuba doesn't. Because somehow, when you don't have the equipment on, the um, the mammals engage with you as a living part of the environment. Ecosystem. And w- one of our hopes is, is to really generate a culture where we begin to start engaging with life, intelligent life that is around us. And we hope that one of the things coming from this movement is that that engagement where we really start looking at swimming. Because everywhere else you go now, swimming at dolphins is like really cool, not captivated sea world. We're talking about just, you know, if, if they're interested and if you cool, they come up and say hi. So that's one of the things we're really excited about and, you know, trying to find the right ways to do that. And um, one of the benefits of free diving too is, unlike scuba, you can dive all day, right? Scuba, there's a certain limit in terms of time and depth because of the, the gases and how the gases interact with you and exposure to the challenges of scuba, which is bends. And free diving is a lot different. It's where that the body in itself is capable often of even more than the technology that we've made if we know the the, the path to access it. And, and that's what Evolve offered me, the pathway. That's interesting because I find that even on land, so I'm doing some planting, you know, massaging Mother Earth, and even the way that I move in the space, I don't know if it's economy or movement, mindfulness, I know what I'm doing, so I don't need to think about it, so I just do it. So kind of accessing a bit of flow. Uh, you see more animals in terms of birds, uh, <laughs> some some other mammals coming and interacting with you. So they're not coming and shaking and playing with the way the dolphins might swim with you. But at the same time, when you move, when you come a little closer to them, they don't fly away. Uh, so I can just imagine how that is magnified in the water when you become a little more part of the of the ecosystem. Some something really something really to look at. But there is one more question that I wanted to ask, and that would be, how do people contact you they want, if they want to be a part of this? Uh, I don't know whether or not it is something that you do in terms of meeting regularly at certain places, or how does that go about? So, um, there's three things going on. I'll let Ren talk about the course that's happening this weekend in Tobago. Don't stick if you don't click. Um... <laughs> But there's like three spaces. One, Rob Allen, Trinidad, which is on 10th Street, Barataria. Um, you know, you just Google it. You'll get the number. Give them a call. Because Mushtaq Mohammed is the guy who has brought in Evolve to do the courses. Um, secondly, in terms of the club, you just um, we are on Facebook. Um, Evolve Freediving Study Group Trinidad. Um, 498-2609. And, um, well, obviously, the course this weekend, I'll let Ren set that up yeah so we actually have two two simultaneous courses going on um they start on thursday morning um at like 9 a.m and uh there's a free diver level course which is two days it's actually two and a half days and then there's the intermediate course which is a four-day course um the difference is you get um two extra sessions in the intermediate course um, it's a little more expensive, but um, it's well worth well worth that. Um, yeah, so we'll be in Tobago. Charlottesville is is kind of the location we're going to be diving. And um, uh, um, if you'd like a number um, two nine zero nine six one seven two nine zero nine six one seven or six eight two one five one nine. Or just go to the website, www.evolvefreediving.com. All the instructions, payment, everything is available. Yeah, so it's 290-9817 or 682-1519. And can we open the phone lines for a split second to sure. see if we yeah. get two, two or three calls? So the number Questions is 622, since we're talking about numbers, the number is 622-4911. <laughs> That's 622-4911. And while we see whether or not we have anybody calling in to make a contribution to ask a question, I want to ask, with regard to conservation, and I see your, <coughs> I see there were, there were some bags that were made how how much more do you want to be part of the environment and keep the environment when you're able to see so much more? Well, I mean, the, the, the sailcloth bags is just a typical example of, 
you know the culture that free diving develops in a person where you you, you know once you in the water and you see a, a stag bottle or a random can on the ground and it you see how a piece of plastic is around a turtle and it's strangling the turtle you know you, you, you develop a totally different feeling for the environment and right now we have a call hello good morning you are live good morning good morning to your guests we can't hear do you think that we evolved from the mermaid or did the mermaid evolve from us okay we have a gentleman asking whether or not we evolved from the mermaid or the mermaid evolved from us <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yeah we 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 uh, the mermaid definitely evolved from us, <laughs> <laughs> and I think Discovery Channel did a good job on the um, that evolution. It takes, <laughs> it takes all kinds, you know. I don't know. I don't know if that call was instructive. I think it was. <laughs> Actually, there's something called Homo delphinus, yeah, where they talk about humans and our origins and our returning to the sea and. With the mammalian dive reflex, it does pose many questions, and they haven't really figured out why. We're so well adapted to marine environment, so something to, to to think about. But one of the things I was asking about when I when I when I asked you Ren, about pushing past boundaries, plateaus, uh, I won't say glass ceiling because we're in the water. But there was there are communities, there are people, races, tribes, who live more in the water than on land, and. You, I've, I've, I've looked at some of them on National Geographic, and what they do is mind-boggling. But let we have another call. Hello, good morning. You're live. Oh. Hello, good morning. Yes. Um, the, uh, the MP for Digo Martin West office number. Uh, uh, what, can, what can I check in with this? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. We have some people trying to push past different kind of boundaries here. And like I said, possibly that's instructive. But Ren Chapman, Rondell Benjamin, thank you so much. And... Um, being able to access and deal with those mental states in life when we come out of the water, I think is something that many people will be interested in. Thank you for your time, and thank you for doing it right here on Talk City, 91.1 FM. This is The Contender. You are listening to Talk City, 91.1 FM. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time.